All right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen.
And we're getting started here. We've got Ox hosting an open tournament. Um, nine foot tables. We've got nine foot Rassons, 10 ball, open tournament, race to seven. I believe on both sides. And uh, we got a pretty decent match here. Uh, Daniel Sardencilio starting it off versus Noriel Dianco. Playing on table one. They are playing 10 balls. He got a call shot. And I think uh, so far, if you've been watching, they've got a couple of flukes in this. A uh, couple of fluke shots. But Noriel looking pretty decent here. Like he's going to run out. Fortunately, had a little bit of a delay to start the stream off, but everything seems to be working fine. Let me let me know if the audio sounds good. Is anything um, anything sounds off in the stream or doesn't look correct? I'll do my best to keep track of the score. And um, yeah, we're looking pretty good. One to one to start this one. Race to seven. So shout out to Colin for his uh, use of his scoreboard there at the bottom of the screen. But uh, it's got the Fargo rate odds there. I think they might be a little bit different depending on your um, opinion. But I believe these, I try to read these as kind of just odds, not as actual percentages. You know, not that Daniel's an 89% chance to win, but more of a, he's a 9 to 1 favorite in the current situation. Um, nice break there from Daniel. Unlucky to get a couple of nudges on this cue ball. He got a little bit loose on it, and it kind of came up farther up table than he wanted to. Hit the right side rail. The one did settle somewhere in the middle of the table. So he might have a thin hit at this one, but uh, not by much, I'd say. ASC Manhattan. How's it going? Everything sounds good. Looks great. Sweet. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, let me know if you guys hear any weird stuff uh, we'll keep an eye on the chat Michael David how's it going over on YouTube howdy howdy we're doing this uh, remotely from the East Coast uh, this live stream I'm not actually in the room as much as I would like to be um, but uh, hopefully things are looking clear I don't think we're having to have any too many delays unless our internet breaks or something we should be fine Daniel kind of selling out a little bit of a shot here. Three to four seems doable. He's going to be crossing the line a little bit. Seven passes the nine to the side pocket, so everything looks pretty reachable. <clears throat> it's going to be a matter of kind of controlling his cue ball and staying in line. So often we see players um, shoot these shots, overrun the first position just a little bit. The next one gets that much a little bit harder and it starts to kind of compound until you end up having no shot maybe on the third or fourth attempt. Um, so here's in a bit of a pickle. That's kind of the issue there was that he was crossing the line on that position. He's going to hopefully bump this five towards the corner pocket and have a shot. Just overcut it just a bit. Yeah, it kind of settles on your mind when you're Really trying to get the right kiss on that other ball, you end up overlooking the pot sometimes. So, got Daniel at the table now, ready to rock and roll. Uh, SC Manhattan, yeah, controlling the cameras remotely as well. Yep, we are. All over IP, baby, let's go. This is the Daniel's mode of play that I call his casual play. He's kind of just cruising around the table, just not going too you know, thinking too hard about it. He's got a pretty open layout. He's kind of in maintenance mode. It's all about just kind of staying in rhythm, staying focused. Howdy, howdy. We've got folks in the chat. Hello, hello. Daniel running these balls out like a champ, though. Pretty straightforward. See if we could test out our uh, replay as well. 
nicely done there from Daniel. Let's oh, take a look at this 10 ball again. Hello, hello. Is the replay working? Seems to be working like Daniel. a charm. Running these balls out like Just a champ, though. Up after this Pretty straightforward. Ten ball. Let's see if we could nice. test out our... Uh, yeah, replay works well. So, we're in for a treat, folks. It's going to be a good one. Hey, Ed Slade. What's up? What's up? How's it going? Thanks. Yeah, good, good to see you in the chat. We're testing out our remote live streaming capabilities here at Ox, and it's so far we're looking so good. 1080p, 60 frames. I think it's the clearest live stream we've ever had. And um, do you believe if any of the players you know, they get knocked out early or have a big a bit of a break, they can join us in the booth? We got a microphone and headset set up in there for folks who want to join. All right, all right. Um, let's see. So Oh, yeah, sorry. I forgot to undo the audio. Yes. Thank you, Thick Eagle. I forgot. Good call. I'm gonna mute that audio source so it doesn't replay over current talking. So Noriel's got an interesting starter here. Nice shot to control the cue ball. Middle of the table. And he's gonna have to play this combination. I like playing shape for the five just in case you make both balls as well. You should have a shot. Hey Dan Peterson, what's up? Yeah, I'm I'm remote. I'm on the East Coast right now, just Getting the camera feed over and um, doing this from home. So not too bad, not too shabby. I'm going to turn the microphone up a little bit. Hopefully you guys can hear the audio a little bit better. Making sure it's not too loud but not too quiet. Ooh, decided to slow roll this one, guaranteeing the shot. I think this ball is kind of settled up on against the rail just a little bit. Yeah, it looks a little bit close to the rail, but he should be fine. He's got to not hit it too thick. Yeah, I think he saw it. No problem. Nicely done. Not a miss I was expecting to see on Oriel. It looked like he was getting off to a strong start there. Maybe a little timid in the first rack. I'm not sure if he knows Daniel at all, but I think uh, and Daniel can provide that intimidation factor sometimes. It's a decent safety here, I think. Looks close, but I think an edge is maybe squeakable. Not sure if I would want to go for this cut, though, at all. I think I might... Just go rail first and try to thin off the edge of the five and hopefully it stays down in that area and doesn't get too close to this left corner pocket. It's gone a little bit of inside. Now you could see a lot more of the ball than I thought then. Okay. Pretty, pretty close, but I think he... Uh, just shot that a little bit too quick. Mm, nice spin three rails. is going to come towards the seven a little bit hot. And he just overran it a bit. It's a pretty good shot, that three rail inside, maybe four rail position, but... Uh, Going that far up table, if you're not quite in tune with the table yet, you can overrun those by a few inches. 
Just gonna thin off of this ball and play it up table. Not hard enough to get behind the 8-9, but containing nonetheless. I think um, this is a potable ball, but definitely not one that's going to be high percentage by most people. Nice, Dan, you're heading back to Seattle. Nice, should be fun. Mm, is he going for the bank here? Off of the eight, maybe? Oh, almost caught that eight ball. But he's going to get a good roll and tuck it up underneath this eight. Not going to leave a shot. There is a hear me out chance. Or maybe maybe this uh, eight seven could go up into the top right corner combination. He's going to go this way, though. It is a decent kick and stick chance if you can just get the angle right. Too often you go too far and go off of the seven and go forward to the corner or end up bumping into the eight. But if you can get this angle right, just needs to kind of do a stop shot basically. Then nothing more complicated than like a center ball, a little bit of low spin maybe. Oh, he's going soft the other way. Okay. That shot, I think he needed to hit fuller. Don't know if he got a rail there. He's saying he didn't get a rail. To take a look at the replay real quick. They're nothing more complicated than like Looks like it's rolling up. And eight ball didn't quite touch, so good call, Daniel. Tis a ball in hand. Eight ball didn't get to the rail. It's a little bit tough for Noriel to see from his angle. That's why he questioned it maybe. Now we're gonna go inside three rails, it looks like. Go around the 9, 10, and looking a little bit far, but still got a decent shot. Is it going to stun this, maybe play 9 on the side, or is he going to draw this all the way back up for the 9 in the corner? I think with a little bit more angle, 9 on the side is definitely appropriate. Or even go forward two rails towards it. It's also not a bad shot. Uh, just overcut it and watch out cue ball. Left Daniel in a little bit of a predicament. Yes, yeah, it's a little bit weird in this shot. Back cuts it like a dream. Nice cue ball. And another one down. Takes it down. Three to one, Daniel. So yeah, guys, uh, like and subscribe, share out the stream. Let us know where you're watching from. Should be um, should be a good time. I'm excited. Got a lot of good local players playing and some players from Canada. I think Noriel's actually from Canada, so. Pretty good talent here over at Ox. Unfortunately, I think the field's only about 18 players, 20 players. I think uh, we had some last minute dropouts, unfortunately, but still, we got some pretty, pretty high Fargo players. I think uh, half the field's probably around 650 or up, so uh, should be pretty sweet. Jonathan Herring watching over from Redmond. Needs to get over to Ox. Nice. Yeah, come check it out. Rick Adams watching from Spokane. Yeah, I see Manhattan. We know you're from Vancouver. You've been you've been around for a bit. Oh, this one ball is gonna drop. He doesn't want that. But the two is shootable. So far, pretty strong break from Daniel in terms of the pattern of the ball splitting. Controlling his cue ball a little bit. Up table too much, maybe wants to put a little bit a little bit more top on it and kind of square it up a bit. It's kind of floating to the right side of the table in the past two breaks. I'm not sure if he's doing that on purpose or not, but Zach Ross watching from bed. Nice. Hey Zach, if you want to do some commentary, the, the microphone's open in the booth over at Ox. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Little speedy these tables. 
Yeah, I'm not far from bed though. I'm I'm in my office at home, so that's not a not a far reach to get over there. All this work from home stuff, you know. Or if you got a good microphone at home, just let me know. I'll add you to the call. David, what if we have a bad mic? Um, I don't know. I think uh, we'll have to test it out first, maybe to see it. Just the uh, microphone quality does make a big difference, as far as I've noticed. But uh, if you got a mic good enough to game with, I think you're good enough. Nice safety here from Noriel. Good control of that three ball to push it around and doesn't leave a window, so looking good. Okay, a little bit of background audio fixing, but hopefully you can still hear some of the some of the noise there. A little two rail kick, and someone's got to tell Daniel these plays short on these rassons. Uh, Jonathan Herring, is there parking for Ox or mostly street parking? Yeah, mostly street parking. I think there is a um, there is a few paid parking lots in the area that you know go for you know multiple hours. I think most people park at that QFC across the street. Um, I think it has uh, an hour free parking if you're shopping, and then paid parking after that. Um, yeah, I'd recommend if you can find street parking. It's it's in the heart of Capitol Hill, so it's a little bit difficult. <laughs> Stacy Medina, what's up, what's up? Shared the stream, check. Microphone check, background audio check. Hopefully everything's sounding okay. I think we had a little crackling earlier, but I think it's gone now. Should have fixed it. Looks like Noriel didn't have a shot, so he's playing maybe two rail or two fouls on Daniel. Try to get him on another one. Alas, it did not get it, and I think he's left a shot. Finn. Thin-ish back cut to this right side pocket. Definitely back cuttable and pretty natural position to come around the rails, I think. Yeah, Jonathan, I'd recommend probably just parking at the QFC. Um, if you're planning to stay for a long time, you can do, a, I think, early bird parking maybe on the weekend is... is is the way to go. I think it's like eight bucks and you get parking for 12 hours or something like that. If you show up before nine, so. Fortunately, Ox opens at three o'clock every day for the public if you're not a member, so that's going to be a little bit difficult to get in, but uh, if you join as a member, you can get 24 hour access to the club. It's one of the sweet perks. Oh yeah, Sunday free street parking. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Over on YouTube, post in a comment. All day parking underground lot for $12 at QFC, and Sunday is free street parking. So, yeah, I think that's probably your best bet. Sunday we do have some tables open, and there is a league going on. Some other tournament that plays, but... Uh
little bit straight on that seven for Noriel. Not the best angle to go for the eight, so he's gonna have a tough shot here. Compounding positional play. Hey, Junior Sergeant Celio, what's up? Over on Facebook, how's it going? Uh oh, watch out, cue ball. Yeah, just caught it too thin. I think he hit the right amount of spin on that inside shot. The inside spin was going to hold him up, but he just needed to cut the ball a little bit thinner. It's the only reason he went and scratched. So often, so many shots like that where if it's like you just end up getting the angle to make the ball, you all of a sudden look like a like a god because your position is perfect, but when you miss the ball, then your cue ball goes somewhere a little bit off line. Can have the opposite reaction. Daniel looking comfortable, that's for sure. So far to start this one off. Junior asking how many players are there today? So far I think we had 18 players sign up. We had some last minute cancellation unfortunately, but... Yeah, get out if you guys want to play. This is a tough field, but definitely one you'll learn from. That's for sure. And we are 4-1. to one. And if uh, if you guys don't know, I think we're also streaming a second match table over on table 5. Yeah, they're streaming this table over here. I think it's Clay Belvoir playing. I'm not sure who, but go check out Evo Sports is where it's on. Evo Sports on Facebook, I think. Have to go check it and put a link in the chat. But uh, yeah, they're testing out their live stream here at Ox. So we're doing a couple side-by-side -side tables. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like they're live on Facebook. Uh, Clay Belvoir playing Joe Town. But that's not their new portable setup. So, oh wow, unfortunate there with the cue ball. I say unfortunate, but I think there was a little bit of a mistake there on the uh, on the break, as the cue ball did track close to the side pocket initially off the break, which is kind of uh, still on the breaking player technically, I guess. Uh, but uh, yeah, unfortunate to get kicked in like that. So I think Daniel's gonna try to open up these this little cluster six three cluster, hit the top of the six, just like that, because the two is easy position after that. I think um doesn't want to underestimate this shot. Yeah, this is where he wants his cue ball to be. So many players will just jack up and stop this ball in the two, and then you're straight in on the three, you're kind of the wrong angle, and he's looking at where he wants to be. Stop shot good enough or not? <clears throat> Too often we um we just take advantage of the fact that okay, we hit a good shot on the one to the two. Now we get the easy two ball, and then in a sense, drop the ball in the position play and don't look at the angle on the three. Because the three to the four is going to be probably the hardest shot in the rack after this. Yeah, and he played not to go too far forward there, so he can just do a straight drawback. Or maybe use the right long rail. No, he wanted to go a little bit more because otherwise now he's stretched out. Showing us his fancy moves. Let's see it, Daniel. That's a good stroke. He's going to get there, I think. Nicely done. Behind the back. He's showing off. Good stuff. Oof, a little bit uh, reckless there, maybe. <laughs> Jonathan, yeah. Got to learn to shoot with either hand. I agree. Shoot with the... With both hands. Oh, did he miss you there? Or what happened there? Sounded a bit strange. Or maybe a little bit of decel. Deceleration in the stroke. This is. After that, I think this is going to be no longer an easy shot, but. Uh, just got to bear down and stun this. That's the problem when you get out of line just a little bit. You wanted to draw it. That's interesting. 
I'm a fan of going forward and playing the side pocket often in my game, but I see a lot of players choosing to draw back. For example, this, I think um, Noriel had a shot earlier where he decided to draw back as well. Um, but I guess it kind of just depends because the side pocket does look a lot, you know, smaller, thinner from that perspective. Corners generally do play bigger and uh, crossing the line a little bit here. Lost control of the cue ball slightly. Oh, thick eagle. I forgot the replay. Dang it. Yeah, sh I should have done it. Whoops. We'll clip it on Facebook. I, I got the, the full recording, so we'll have to go back and get that shot. But uh, it's a good example of Daniel Sardincilio off bridging. Not offhanded, but uh, reverse handed. It's going to be a good stroke here. Stun across one rail. A little bit outside spin. Juiced it a little bit more maybe than he wanted to, but he's off the rail. Now let's take a look at that stroke. Yeah, nicely done. Daniel's going to go up then, I think, in this one. Gonna be an insurmountable lead, but it's gonna be pretty steep here from Noriel. Then a couple of uncharacteristic mistakes, mostly positional mistakes. Um, just not quite used to maybe the speed over rolling a few spots, getting farther than he wanted to, and maybe playing the position in a way that um, exposes that kind of um, speed control mistakes. Sometimes you can play shots in a certain fashion where you're coming into the shot into the line of the shot instead of going across it. And uh, it can lead to more mistakes. There's his break from Daniel again, and his cue ball does track towards the right half of the table again, off the rail, and could be intentional, but uh, unlucky there to have the five just roll up in front of this two ball. He's just going to push out with his break stick, break cue, and say, here you go, Norio, Norio what, you, what you got? Don't imagine he's going to shoot this combination unless it's dead. But to me, it looks like it's lined up into the uh, half diamond or quarter diamond away from the corner pocket or so. So probably it's a safety. Send this cue ball one, maybe two rails behind this eight, five. It's not going to get there, unfortunately. Essentially, control the two ball on that shot and get the two tucked up to the top rail, either off of one or two rails. Wow, Stacy Medina is over on YouTube and on Facebook. He's hopping around everywhere. Can she be our number one fan? I don't know. She's pretty pretty up there. SC Manhattan's up there too, though. Active viewers of Vox. We haven't been live for a little while here, but um, glad to see that this test is working out well. Not test. I guess we tested it earlier, but uh, this uh, live stream in general is working out well. We got some big events coming up too, so make sure you guys stay tuned in. Hopefully, we have a snooker tournament here soon that we can live stream as well. Francis really wanted to play in this open, but had other plans beforehand. Yeah, that sounds like excuses to me. I don't know. We could take a poll in the chat later, but I think uh, I think it's an excuse. Oh well. Mm, caught that a little bit thin unless he's trying to tuck it up to the three. If he is, he's done a great job there. Nicely done. Mm, 
And he's going to be bridging over these balls really, really tight. Here you can see just how a little separation there is. He's looking to go two, maybe three rails behind the two around this, uh, this 10 ball. It's going to be tough. He's getting pretty close to that 7 ball, but it uh, is... Oh, he just missed a 2. Came short again. Um. Alright, well, so 3 ball still kind of tied up. Only goes into the side pocket, I believe. But, um... Oh no, this is a disaster unless he gets the hook. No, he's left the two wide open. Well, tough, tough, tough. Let's see, uh, what are the big events coming up? SC Manhattan asks over on YouTube. Uh, we will be hosting, hopefully, the U.S. Open for women's, World Women's Snooker again, hopefully in, in August. Uh, stay tuned for that. Um, I believe we're going to have some, maybe some Ox... A random ox snooker tournament in preparation for the BC Open coming in March. I think Dave Daly's in the room today. He probably can tell you more if he jumps on the mic at all tonight. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if I can say it, but I know we have a big event planned for September. And maybe something else planned for some nine ball tournaments. Maybe some qualifiers. But uh, yeah, the idea is we're going to have everything... Uh, Always have something new coming up, that's for sure. Tying himself up here. Whoop! Oh, uh oh, a little sloppy, Daniel. Daniel's a uh, sponsored player, actually, here at Ox. Second year we sponsored him, and so far so good. Playing strong in a lot of events. Francis says the real excuse here is that I moved across the country, so I don't have to compete with you anymore. Yeah, okay. I see. I see. Zach Ross. Oh yeah, we got the whole Stick Game Strong series. This is, I mean, this is Secret Wong's tournament today. Uh, she's hosting Stick Game Strong. Check it out. She's hosting a few events coming up. Zach Ross reminded me, 600 and under is happening end of March, March 31st. So if you guys are 600 and under 10 ball over here on the nine footers, come check it out. Sign up for that. Um, I believe she's rotating, from what I understand. An open tournament, some 600 number and lower, and then some 500 number and lower capped events. So kind of rotating different capped events should be pretty good. Okay, got the heads up. We got another announcement too. Seattle Snooker Open. Uh, it's going to be scheduled now for June 22nd through 24th here in Ox Billiards. So come check out Seattle Open. Um, this is at Ox Billiards, Seattle, Washington. It's going to be pretty sweet. This is going to be a third annual year running the Seattle Snooker Open, so it should be fun. What else we got? Ed Slade chiming in. He's saying that uh, Northwest Cup is going to have some qualifiers here at Ox at some point. Need to get with Michael and Secret to schedule them. If you guys don't know about Northwest Cup, it was a pretty sweet event last year. We hosted it here at Ox on this table you're seeing here. Team Washington, Team Oregon. Washington took it down. Something like 9-6 to six or 9-5, to five, I, f I forget exactly. But it's the um, Northwest version of the Moscone Cup. Kind of team pool format mix of singles and doubles and team play 
It's a lot of fun. Shout out to Mike Littman, Ra Hanna. Hosted it here. Allison Fisher was the guest commentator. It was a lot of fun. Great time. I was lucky to do the production for it, and it came out pretty good. And I think next year it's going back to uh, Oregon, and hopefully, hopefully, we're going to be uh, part of it again and make it bigger and better and better than ever. It's going to be a good time. First time finding the stream, is it, is it okay to ask where the room is? This is in the uh, heart of Capitol Hill in Seattle, Washington. It's a suburb of uh, Seattle. we got some stuff online on Facebook and YouTube. Ox Billiards. Go check it out. Oh, yeah, Zach wrote the article for the uh, highlights. Check it out on Ox Billiards' website. I think uh write-up came out about a month or a few months ago, I think. A couple months ago, something like that. But uh, awesome write-up from Zach. He's done a few different write-ups. I think there was a big match that Daniel and... Or a big final that Daniel and James played. I think there was a match where Cole Gibbons came down to play Daniel. And we had Jeremy Jones in the booth doing the commentary while he was here that week for the Northwest Cup. I think there was an article for that. So definitely go check it out. Oxbilliards.com. Got some blogging stuff. Blogging. I guess, I guess it's technically blogging, but yeah. Shout out to Zach, doing some articles. If you guys are interested, do reach out to Mike at Ox Billiards if you guys want to be part of uh, releasing some more press for future events. This one's going to be a pretty good one. There's some tough players in the field. I think we've got three or so 700s and up in this tournament. Congrats to Daniel. He just got his 700 badge. Been playing pretty strong. The past couple years. So definitely deserving. <clears throat> Stacy Medina. You have it up on the big screen. The picture is crystal clear. Beautiful. Awesome. Dag. Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. Glad we could provide it. I think it's actually higher resolution than our normal streams because I'm I am running this on a stronger PC, <laughs> even though it's remote. <laughs> I think uh video resolution is a little bit higher on this one, so Always learning, always improving. Let us know if there's anything off. It's a little tricky because he's kind of at a weird angle. I think you just want to roll this with top spin, oddly enough. Oh, he's going inside. <sighs> just missed the tip. Yeah, just missed the catch on that eight. I feel like just a top spin shot there, not too hard to let the spin take over. It lets you go around the nine along the right side of the table, but it does get a little flirty with that side pocket, so maybe he just wanted to avoid all all risk there. And I believe it is a race to seven, so Daniel's on the hill. This could be his match. Oh no, Daniel. Uncharacteristic miss. Not sure if it's going to be enough to cost him the rack, but uh... oh no, indeed. So Noriel knocks it down. Just wants to get it close, two to six, much better than seven to one. So. I can hear him saying that uh Noriel saying asking Daniel, Daniel, you just wanted to keep playing, huh? You didn't you didn't uh, you didn't want to run out and take a break, you just wanted to stay at the table. <laughs> he says, I guess so.
right, well. First dry break there from Daniel. And um, decent starter, eight, nine are clustered up. Cord asking on Twitch, alternate break, I guess. Yeah, this is alternate break, I believe. Standard BCA rules, alternate break, 10 ball. No 10 on the break counts, but uh, early 10s do count if they're called. Using the extendomatic here. Got a lot out of that cue ball. Oddly enough, sometimes you get a little bit more spin than you expect when you're uh, stretching out like that. I find it does happen a lot uh, with the uh, using the bridge as well or the rest. Players often underestimate their tip position because oftentimes we 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 think we're hitting a lot of you know right spin or a lot of left spin. Our tip tends to veer back towards center a lot of the time, and with that with that bridge, you get a little bit different perspective, and you often see players just push the tip a little bit lower, a little bit more extreme than they normally do, and out zips that ball a lot more than they wanted. That was a tough shot. Noriel, really close to his work. Unfortunately, he's going to leave an angle for this three. He's going to run up and try to bust open the th nine. Might have been thinking about it, but at that speed, it's hard to control it either way. But I think he's lucky to get this angle on the four. Can shoot it into the left corner pocket, I believe. That's a great shot from Daniel. Showing his stroke. High class pool. And congrats to Daniel. He, I think he was in a big tournament recently. I guess, was it last year? Yeah, in, in October, I think uh, he was in a pretty high buy in tournament over in Vegas and ended up runner up, I believe. It was like a 790. 700 and under, 699 and under. Ooh, and this is actually pretty nice. I think he's got a perfect angle here to bust into this 8. And I like hitting the top of the 8, not even bumping the 9, just so the 8 gets out of the way. Yeah, the way he hit it there, if he hits the 9, the 8 is kind of still not moving, and it also kind of gets your cue ball stuck up against those balls a little bit more. Whereas if he runs into that 8 ball full, he can just nudge it to the rail and his cue ball is going to float down and leave a nice angle in the 7 to come up table for the 8. It's a little bit tricky that combo. I think you kind of do was just playing to hit it, but the way you hit it had a lot to do with it there. And caught that a bit thick. That speed, it's going to throw a lot so he does have to kind of overcut it slightly. Oh, is it 5-3 maybe? Stacy Medina getting my score correct. You might be right. I think uh, I'll update it according to the quarters for now. But I think you're right. Got a lot going on, so I might have missed one of the scores. The quarters do not lie. It is 3-5 in that case. It was a little bit lucky for Daniel because this, even if... This seven goes down really tough to get on the eight in a makeable fashion. I don't know if the eight is far enough away from the nine to make it an easy safety. It's going to be kind of a naked safety where he's going to have to maybe play behind the ten and use the nine as a backboard to hold the eight in that area. I'm assuming he makes his jump shot because it's somewhat... Pretty makeable. 
He is the opposite handed, so the table's a little bit in his way, but he should be fine. Let's hop over this ball, play to the right side of the table, maybe thin off the eight. Oh, just launched it. It's tough to control, but that's the next level of jumping when you're, you know, you're getting over the ball, but controlling the pace off of that, how far it goes is definitely the next step. It's kind of a tough shot too. You kind of have to land on it, I guess, right? So Daniel, I think just being prudent and asking if he wants somebody to watch the shot. Tournament director Secret Wong making a cameo on stream. Just to make sure there's not a double hit. Looks good to me. I got the replay just in case. Uh -huh. So he's playing up in the corner. Come one rail towards this 10 ball. Let's see if the quarters don't lie. Yep, looks like quarters don't lie. Six to three, race to seven. Pull up the bracket here. It's a little bit tough to see. I can maybe zoom in a little bit later, but uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven matches started. A few players with a buy. Bo Bologna has got a buy. James DeV has a buy. Stephen Follin has a buy. Oh, Tom Aiken and Leo Ott is the last match. So they must be, they must have eight tables going right now. Big table five is Clay Belvoir and Joe Town that you can see there in the third match from the top. They're playing over on table five. And check them out on the Evo Sports live stream. And another reckless cue ball. I think it's the second time his cue ball has jumped off the table for Noriel. Off the brakes. So a little bit off angle. He's hitting them. Benit Dasini, Dasini over on Facebook. What's up? What's up? These are honorary, uh, honorary guest um referee for snooker if you guys uh go check out some of our snooker events last year he attended some of them and helped us out a lot with uh doing doing refereeing seattle open etc etc stacy medina some serious heavy hitters that's for sure yeah this is a big event i'm a little bit sad there's not more players because uh would have been fun to see really big field for an event like this but I guess uh, it's got to boost the boost the added money maybe and boost the uh, marketing forward in the future and yeah I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of open tournaments because you get to match up against players that uh, you you normally wouldn't necessarily when you're playing in your local BCA and APA events etc so oof rattled that one home Caught it a little bit thicker, so he didn't quite get over enough, but he's still fine on this six. Probably just going to play it softly. Eight ball looks like it's the one heading to the top right corner. One of the ten balls over in your top left. It's a little bit tough to tell with the black set, Aramith black set. Now I think he's just cruising. Stays on the good side of the nine. <clears throat> Should be a break and run for Daniel to close out this match. He's definitely the favorite in this one, but uh, good for Noriel to get three down on this match. And I think that's it. There's the handshakes. Daniel takes it down.